Hello, and welcome back to the Let's Play of Kodelka. In this episode, we're going to be some, uh, doing something a little bit different from the last few, and uh, this is actually more of a let's read. I'm going to be reading the Guard's Diary in full, and I'm going to be trying to do it in character, even though I'm going to stumble on I'm not the best voice actor, not right now anyway. And um, any read file I get, I'm going to probably try to have some voice actors do and uh yeah this will be the new thing we're gonna get in character now so going to read the guard's diary first june 1716 it's been two months since i left canterbury owing to my stay at st Clair's. Lord Webster had said that the weather would be warm at this time of year, but it's still brisk in the fishing villages lining the coast. After the days of being knocked about in the carriage, I have finally arrived at Nemerton Prison, an evil-looking place, leering down on a barren plain from atop a cliff battered by the chill sea breezes. Lord Webster told me to keep the strictest confidence. I cannot say what lies within this old, lonely building. Only that while I am yet young, I have been a god many years, but I have never seen nor heard of a gaol built in such a place as this. While Lord Webster didn't tell me m uh, much about the prison's history, it's easy to imagine that part of this foreboding place played in quieting conspiracies and political struggles. Although I do not look forward to spending my days here, I have no choice. My family depends on it. 2nd June, 1716, Neverton Prison, Hell on Earth. While conditions here are no worse than Newgate, they are no better. I had imagined it would be so, but imagining a thing and actually experiencing it are very different. I shudder to think of the countless souls in prison here over the centuries. There are people from all walks of life here, from members of the Pale, removed from contention for an inheritance the simple barbers locked away to prevent them from repeating what they had innocently heard while performing their jobs. Locked away and tortured and killed. My research into the prison record showed that only a select few of those sent here were ever convicted of crime. This is no simple prison it claims to be. No, it is rather, a, rather simply a dungeon where those in power seal away those without it who stood in that way. How ironic that of this place built as a house of God should become a house for horrors forsaken by him. The June, 1760. I have discovered something nearly impossible to believe because I do not wish to. According to the prison records from 1632 to last year, over 8,200 people have met the maker within these walls. And these are only those of whom oh, there are records. There are many more hapless souls that have died locked away here, with no one ever caring. 4th June, 1716. Today I was ordered by the warden to watch over the prisoners in the West Wing. Although this is my first assignment since arriving, I do not look forward to it. This is different from punishing some simple beggars. What sort of man could take pleasure in beating women and children? Receiving a, uh, received a letter from Mum in Southampton today. She complains that I wasn't able to attend my sister's wedding. Apparently, she married a Gibbs boy, one of the wealthier land-owning families in the area. I'm sure she'll be happy. She's been bro uh, brought up well and should have no problem fitting into even the Gentry family. It seems like just yesterday she was a baby, following me around and clutching a favorite little doll. I'm fiercely proud of her, even though I worry she might have been pampered a bit too much. I wish her the best of luck as she is now, so as she now starts her own family. 5th June, 1716. We begin the questioning of prisoner 27 today. The warden tells us he was instructed to do so by one of the nobles currently in favor with the crown. He looks to have been a man of good learning and some standing. He broke down and cried like a baby after the arms were pressed to his chest. Knowing he will never be released, we need not take care to leave him whole. 
I'm used to, uh, to using water or a rack, something that would not leave a mark for such things. But here, there is no purpose, no desire to convert a heathen or bring about repentance. Here, the punishment is only meant to cause as much pain as possible until death. A job is a job, and while I have no intention of taking it up with the warden, I still have reservations about what I do here. After all, we are still no, uh, nominally employees of the Crown, getting paid to inflict pain on others. Are we no different from common ruffians? 6th July, 1716. Torturing people has become a daily routine, and there's no shortage of tools here. Whips, chains, iron maidens, Spanish boots, cages, spiders, even some I had never seen or heard of before coming here. I must admit that I am impressed at the ingenuity of, of the human mind and the ways that it can create such a myriad of ways to inflict pain upon others living beings. But which is worse, those who think of such devices or those who use them? All those we torture beg us to kill them, but we instead keep them alive that they may suffer more. There is no rest for them, not now, not ever. 14th August, 1776. Received a letter from my mum today. She says my brother is waiting, wanting to go to some fancy school in the east and he needs money. Why would he want to go to such a place as beyond me? Imagine, a university graduate in our family? I wonder what Paul would think. I know she gets some money from my sister's family, but I'm sure she doesn't want to always be asking for handouts for her daughter, er, from her daughter. I want to help. I want to do as much as I can for my family. 31st August, 1716. The mad woman in solitary confinement has died. If there is such a thing as a fate, she must have been born under the, uh, an unlucky star. She was a merchant daughter who had been promised <laughs> to the heir of a wealthy family, but he had, he had a change of heart and abandoned her, eventually married a nobleman's daughter, and was adopted into the family which had no heir. She was brought here to keep her out of the public eye. She kept the wedding dress. She never got to wear it until the day she died. I wonder, who's more insane, her or us? 26th September, 1776. A strange rumor is making its rounds amongst the prisoners. The number of people who say they have seen a sign from God in the night sky are growing. None of the other gods believe there is such a thing, but such rumors are often a sign of trouble. I hope nothing happens. 3rd October, 1716. Torture, pain, and death. These fill the days of all who live here. I have come to envy those who quit living. Dear God, have mercy on my soul. I did not come here to become an executioner. I have pleaded with the warden to have pity on at least those suffering from illness, but he turned a deaf ear on my pleas. In the end, there are only two things people care about, power and money. They who you have it, use it, and they who do not must suffer. 13th October, 1776, or 1716. I feel as if I'm losing my mind. I can no longer hear the screams of those who trapped here. Could I help, or could, he or could I help them? I would, but since I cannot, I do no uh, not wish to share their confinement a moment longer. Were it my choice, I would quit this place at once, but my family looks for me to me for support. Also, I cannot let Lord Webster, who found me this job, down. I must repay his confidence in me. The other gods say that I will grow used to it soon enough, but I should not let myself become uh, be afflicted by trivialities. Trivialities? Can they not hear the screams? I understand now. They must be as mad as any of the prisoners. That, then, is my fate. I, too, shall end up mad, just like them. 29th October, 1716. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? 
the day of the Lord of Darkness is uh, Lord is darkness, not light, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear may uh, meet him, or went into the house and learned that his hand, uh, leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall I not be? Uh, shall not be the day of the Lord, or be uh, be darkness, or not light, or even very dark and no brightness in it? Book of Amos, chapter five. First November, seventeen sixteen. I am writing this after having been awakened by gunshots in the middle of the night. There are screams of joy and anger throughout the building. We are being attacked by an armed band. Apparently, the sign of God the prisoners had been discussing is actually a signal from the people outside the prison plotting to aid them and uh, their incarcerated friends. The freed prisoners are going mad, killing the guards and other staff. Their positions reversed. They flee for their lives, but are hunted down, beaten, killed, even buried alive. I find the strangest satisfaction in watching them. They who were so drunk on power and wealth, dying like insects in the heads of those who they thought, or the hands they th of those they thought masters of. The mob is sure to make its way in here. Uh, make its way here in time. The time of our, our my judgment is upon us. Do not grieve for me, dear sister. I will welcome with them with open arms as a fellow sufferer and sinner. Even now I hear footsteps that are outside my door. They 